AMD's board partner, PowerColor, has made a huge mistake and revealed the yet-to-be-announced Radeon RX 7800 XT graphics card. PowerColor published a product page for the RX 7800 XT Red Devil GPU confirming all the specifications, design and more. In this video, we are going to take a look at the RX 7800 XT specifications, performance in games, release date and price. But first… CDKeyOffer.com is my number one choice for when I need to buy a cheap Microsoft software key. They are a reliable provider of affordable keys to me, my friends and the channel community for over two years now, so highly recommended. Use my discount code IVADIM to get 30% off an already amazing price and grab yourself a Windows 10 Pro for $16, Windows 11 Pro for $23 or Office 2021 for just $52. You can use PayPal for fast and secure payment and get your key instantly. Links to all these products are in the description below. Let's start with the specifications. The RX 7800 XT uses a fully enabled Navi32 chip featuring 60 compute units, 3840 shader cores, 256-bit memory interface and 16GB of 18GBps GDDR6 memory, for a total of 576GB per second bandwidth. We do not know the exact power consumption details of the GPU. However, PowerColor recommends using an 800 watt power supply with this RX 7800 XT Red Devil model. The power is delivered via two 8 pin power connectors visible on this photo. To put things into perspective, AMD recommends an 800 watt power supply with its RX 7900 XTX reference card, so it looks like PowerColor has boosted the 7800 XT by quite a bit because earlier leaks indicate that this GPU should have a 260 watt TDP, although it is nothing out of the ordinary. Board partners release models that are clocked higher than AMD's own reference cards all the time. PowerColor has equipped the RX 7800 XT Red Devil with a BIOS switch, so you can choose to use a standard AMD BIOS if you don't want the card to use so much power. The official spec sheet reveals that you won't be losing that much performance if you choose to do that because there is only a 45 MHz difference between the two BIOS options. In my opinion, losing a couple percent of performance is well worth it. In return, you'll have a graphics card with lower noise, less heat and you'll be saving money on your energy bills. Personally, I always choose a silent BIOS option to take advantage of that extra power efficiency. Next, I'd like to bring your attention to how the RX 7800 XT compares to its predecessor, the RX 6800 XT. I think we can all agree that the next generation of product should always deliver better specifications and performance over the previous generation. Well, that is not the case with the RX 7800 XT. It features a slightly faster memory that is not enough to compensate for the loss of 12 compute units versus the 6800 XT with its 72 compute units. This will almost certainly result in an underwhelming performance. I expect the RX 7800 XT to deliver FPS and games close to that of the RX 6800 XT in the best case scenario. I cannot believe that AMD decided to call this GPU an RX 7800 XT. This is the latest proof of what I was talking about earlier. Both AMD and Nvidia are up naming their graphics cards in this generation. If AMD would have been reasonable, then this RX 7800 XT should have been called the RX 7700 XT. Hear me out, it makes a lot of sense once you take a look under the hood of these GPUs. The RX 6800 XT uses a cut-down version of the Navi 21 GPU, while the RX 7800 XT uses a full version of the lower class GPU called Navi 32. Effectively, the RX 7800 XT is a direct successor of the RX 6700 XT that uses the Navi 22 GPU. If my performance estimation is correct, then I have no idea how AMD plans to market the RX 7800 XT to us. Only selling points might be the lower power consumption and lower price. The RX 6800 XT price at launch was $649, but the recently released RX 7900 GRE already occupied this exact MSRP. It is only logical to expect that AMD will price the RX 7800 XT at $550 to $600. Compare that to the RX 6700 XT's $479 MSRP at launch. 
Even if AMD decides to price the 7800 XT at $550, it is still a very big price increase for the same class of GPU. It is absolutely disgusting to see that both major GPU makers are using the same dirty tricks. We really need Intel to step up its GPU game quickly. It will be way more difficult for these companies to pull off such dirty moves once there are more competitors fighting for our money. Insane demand for AI GPUs is also part of the problem. Some AI startups have begun buying huge quantities of the RX 7000 series GPUs. It is not as bad as during the GPU shortages we have experienced during the crypto mining boom, but still enough for these companies not to care about being competitive, because they know that they can sell every piece of silicon they have booked at TSMC's fabs. So they don't have any financial incentives to give gamers any good value deals right now. Instead, Nvidia chooses to lower production of the RTX 40 series graphics cards to keep the prices high because they can use that manufacturing capacity to make more GPUs for customers in the AI industry. Demand for AI GPUs is huge right now. Everything is sold out many months in advance, and prices are rising as a result of this demand. So AMD and Nvidia stand to gain significantly higher profits by selling to the AI industry instead of gaming. As for the release date, AMD has not officially confirmed an exact date yet, but we are expecting to see the RX 7800 XT reveal at Gamescom at the end of this month, and the launch sometime in September. To be honest with you, I am not looking forward to any new GPU launches in this generation. At this point, I think we should all hold on tight to our money and wait for the next generation of graphics cards. Usually, after a bad generation, we get a good generation, because it is easy to deliver better value over the previous poor value generation. Check out my video about the RTX 50 series next. And if you enjoyed this video, then reward it with a like. That tells YouTube to serve it to more people, which helps me a lot. Also, subscribe for more content like this if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim, until next time.